So I'm a mathematician and I study sperm. Sometimes when I tell people about my research, they ask me whether I conduct any experiments. <laughs> no, I'm a theorist. How could that possibly work, though? Well, let me explain. Spermatozoa were discovered in 1677 by pioneering Dutch lens maker Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Back then, he called them animalcules, small animals, because I guess essentially they look like small animals. They have a head and a tail, called flagellum, and they wave this tail in order to propel themselves through a fluid. Now, physics that governs the motion of objects at the length of humans or aeroplanes or also sperm is essentially classical mechanics. And classical mechanics is just as old as the original discovery of sperm. Curiously, though, the scientific community is still struggling with connecting these two original discoveries, the classical mechanics of swimming sperm. For example, you might ask yourself the seemingly naive question, why do spermatozoa swim forwards and not backwards? And it turns out in certain species, in some situations, they do in fact swim backwards. And we don't fully understand how and why. My research is concerned with developing and using algorithms that solve the equations describing the motion of sperm in fluids on high-performance computers. As you can see, I'm particularly interested in what happens when many of them swim together. And here's an interesting and novel thing we found. If you have really many relatively stupid spermatozoa that all wave their flagella at the same frequency, they start to attract and align and synchronize, and then they form these synchronized clusters in which they keep swimming. If they instead change their frequency at random, rather than forming these synchronized clusters, they form large-scale swirls and vortices, like on the right-hand side of my slide. Now, why is this interesting? Well, it turns out this has an analogy in biology. Sperm of hamsters form synchronized clusters, whereas sperm of sheep is dense and swirly. And this can actually be used to measure their fertility for farming. Still, why would you care about this? <laughs> well, Here's an interesting application. Engineers are currently developing small sperm-like robots that could maybe someday be used to, be, to deposit drugs in patients' bodies. Clearly, to understand and control that the right amount of drug ends up in the right location within your body, you need to understand how these things swim collectively. Maybe, at some point, we'll even understand why spermatozoa usually swim forwards and not backwards. Thank you. <laughs>